Hey YouTube, I want to give you an update on um, the videos that I did uh, yesterday talking about forgiveness. And the Lord really dealt with me today. And he gave me some answers and some reassurance and some understanding of scripture. And the scripture I'm going to reference today is in Matthew 5. And it starts at 10. Matthew 5.10, and I'm going to read all the way down to 13. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Amen. And I just really um, appreciate the Lord for that word. He's telling us the back end of what's available if we can get that scripture. And I have been working on that scripture for years. And I've been begging the Lord to show me how to do that. And that's part of what he was teaching me today is to learn how to rejoice in that type of tribulation where you're getting slapped upside the head by the world and they're projecting upon you um, the stuff they've heard about Jesus. This is the disease of Christianity. You know, they've put all of this information out here. But they've done it in a way that makes people turned off. I mean, they already don't want to hear about Jesus. But they really don't want to hear about Jesus because of the methodology that Christianity has used in order to evangelize people. And so it has created a barrier uh, for opportunity. And what I'm trying to do is learn how to get past those barriers so that I can give other people the opportunity to decide if the Lord is someone that they want to make their allegiance with. And so as we go out here and he sends us out, he said that we have to be as smart as serpents, but as um, innocent as doves. So you have to have the wisdom of the world, but you can't be of the world, even though you know about it. So you have to take that information and take the information he gives us in the scripture and combine that. And then that gives us a light and a pathway to walk. And that's what I was saying to you the other day in the video when I said that he's showing me how to be blameless. If you do what he's telling you to do in these scriptures, in the gospel, it, it is a, it's, it's a way for you to meander in the world. And, um, He's been teaching me now for, like I said, 2012, but just on a higher level, probably about a year or two. When I kind of realized, you know, as I was encountering all these difficult circumstances in my relationship, I was noticing that I was being the one that was judged. I wasn't judging them as they expected me to, because, you know, when they find out that you follow Jesus, they think that you're just going to beat them upside the head <laughs> with a Bible. And what I've been met, what I've managed to be able to do is to live in the word authentically, but um still withstand any uh stereotype. So they can't stereotype me as a Christian as as bad as they want to. They wanna they really want to put me in that Christian box. And he's showing me how to evade being typecast as this zealot. I've been, I'm telling you, I told you I have been called all kinds of things in the name of Jesus. And so that scripture in Matthew 5 that I just wrote is um, what he has to show me to refresh my mind so that I can be strengthened and, and continue to do the walk because he's explaining to you what's going to happen 
if you choose to do what he's telling you to do and to follow him. So the world is going to persecute you. The world is going to throw stones at you. But if you stand up and you endure in his word and the word of, of his patience, you're doing it and you're trusting in him. So, it, And he says it in Revelation 3 about the Philadelphia church and how he's going to keep those who belong to that church from the time of trial that's going to come up on the earth. And that's um, one that's a, a block of scripture that I am using to stand on as a promise. Now, I'm not a pre-trib, you know, person because there are things in Matthew 24 that kind of, well, that not kind of, that um, interfere with that doctrine. I still understand part of it, though, because if you go down, Further past um, where he's talking about um, in the days of the tribulation, the Son of Man is going to come in the clouds. But if you go further down, it talks about how blessed is the servant that will, um, the reward of that servant when he comes, when the Lord comes and finds them doing the work that they were supposed to be doing. Whereas there's going to be that group of people, that group of servants that will decide that, okay, Jesus ain't coming back. So I get a chance to go back out here in the world and, and do whatever I want to do and then prepare later for when Jesus is coming back. So I understand why people believe in the pre-trib rapture. So I'm not against it. I'm just challenging those that believe in it to really delve into the scriptures more um, so you can get that truth. So where I am on it is that he's going to protect his people. He's already proven it with Noah. He's already proven it with Abraham. He's already proven it with Lot. And he's going to protect his people. He did it with Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I mean, out of all of the people who went into captivity, these jokers ended up in the palace. And Daniel ended up with a third of the kingdom that he was in charge of ruling. And they were in captivity. So this is what the Lord does, you know, for his people. And he's proven it in his word, and he's going to do it again until he comes back here. It's not going to stop. So we're going to have to learn how to be uh, live in faith that he's going to, if you're doing that level of work and, and you have that level of relationship with him, then you have to stand you know, on his word. I'm one who is firm on if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, then you can move mountains. I'm about moving mountains. I'm about taking the power of Jesus and manifesting that on earth, taking his word out of print and, and bringing it into existence. And I think that is paramount to what he um, expects of us. He expects us to take his word and bring it out so that we can stand on it, so that we can live on it, so that we can feed on it. He said, man shall not be lived by what? Bread alone, but by uh, every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So God's word is more important than food. It's more important than food. That's where the concept of fasting comes in. And that's where you show the Lord that... Um, uh, the, the, his word and just being with him and hungering and thirsting for him instead of food um, is your goal. And so I started fasting a few years ago, and it's just something I will always continue to do. I've, I've done nothing to gain, you know, from it. So I really try to share that, you know, with you, for those of, us, for those of you who may not, you know, understand that concept. And the Lord said, don't work for the food that's spoiled. Work for the treasure in heaven where thieves can't break in and where moths can't corrupt it. So that's what we're, that's supposed to be our goal, is being cleansed by his word. That's in John 15. He wants us to use his word in order to purify our hearts so that we can be circumcised. Our hearts are supposed to be circumcised. That's what we're supposed to be working on. Taking away that, that tough layer of, of skin so that we can get down to the fleshy part and be cleansed 
and live holy in his word. So I just, like again, I wanted to just give a testimony that he showed up for me. He really um, empowered me with the Holy Spirit today. That's another reason why I really wanted to get this video in because when you got the Holy Spirit flowing and you and working and, and doing that, and I want to be able to, to have that level of energy and faith that I can share, you know, with you guys. And um, just polishing my testimony, polishing my, my pearl of great price, my salvation. And your testimony is directly connected to that. That's Revelation 12. I forget the, the um, verses. But it, it's at that part where it talks about that the saints overcame the, what is it? Is it the beast? It's either, it's, well, the saints overcame the devil with the blood of Jesus and by the word of the testimony. A, let me look at that. I got it right here. Hallelujah. Revelation 12. So this is talking about the, the dragon. It's talking about the dragon. And it's Revelation 12, verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved their lives. They loved not their lives and put to death. So we have to be willing to live and die um, for Jesus. And not just be ready to die physically, but we have to die spiritually to our flesh. And then we have to open ourselves to his word so that we can be made into a new creature. So we can cast off that old man and put on um, the new. And so just thanking you guys for those that, you know, decide that you want to watch my videos and, and, and just keep me in prayer. And I'm glad I got it out. I'm glad I got it testimony out tonight. It was kind of rocky. I had an interesting um, evening, but um, thank you and for your time and attention, and until the next video.